Andrew, thank you very much for coming today to see us. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you are offering today, please. And I've been a full-time property investor for the last three years. Uh, in those three years, I've invested very heavily in my education, so I don't make the mistakes that other people make. In those three years, I've already signed three multi-million pound deals. Excellent. I'm here today looking for a partner, a JV partner, whether it's a 50-50 split or whatever option is the Property Angels works for you. It's an end of terrace house, 191 meters, so it's pretty large, and we can title split that into three flats, three bedrooms, one bedroom, and a two bedroom maisonette on the top. And that will net you around 290K within, within 18 months. Very simply, uh, the total spend will be what, about 1.4 million. From that, there will be about 580k net profit, which of a 50-50 JV will be 290 for the investor. And how much money are you looking for? Uh, 1.4 million to buy, tax, to build out, and then to flip within 18 months. What do you think the end GDV is going to be if you if you want to sell them on? Very conservative, it will be 2 million. That's, that's as the split flats. As you that's right, exactly. Yeah, Title split for a flip. Yeah. A flip. One is to develop them and either sell them or you might be open to, some people might want to hold on to them. Well, I have a, the most profitable one would be to buy it now, convert it to service accommodation, run that for three or four years or five when the market bounces up, and then we can do the title split for a much bigger uplift at the end. Would you do the physical conversion split to three flats, but just not do the title split? Is that what you're saying? If we did the longer term view, we wouldn't even split them now. So it's currently basically an HMO in its current form, or it's a single No, it'll be a home? service accommodation following the Yorkshire model that we have. Okay, but what's it being used at now? This oh, right now, or it was a HMO. It was an HMO. And how many bedrooms? It's not a legal one. Okay, but how many bedrooms were were in it? It's got five rentable bedrooms plus the caretaker. So actually, there are six bedrooms in there that so we can. Why let wasn't out. it legal? Just because the standards weren't up to spec. I think they just. It's been going for many years. Yeah. They didn't upgrade it. And they just never okay. applied. That's okay. what happened. Uh, how many rooms could you get out of it right now as an HMO? I didn't really look at that too much, but we can definitely get seven or eight rooms. And what would you rent each HMO room out for? A minimum of 750 a month. There are lots, of, there, are lots there for 750 But you think it would be far more. more profitable as serviced accommodation? I believe it would be much more profitable as serviced accommodation. The challenge is obviously financing it. A service accommodation. Yeah, it's not serious and, clients. And planning, I guess, is the other issue. You well, there are the ways right around that, actually. Okay. I found, actually, if I... Legal ways, we hope. <laughs> yes, of course. I only do things legally. Uh, really, I only of do course. it legal for the long term. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. But actually, I would recommend it to follow the Yorkshire model, which is actually one big house. And the rents there are hundreds of pounds. We could even get 1,000 a night, potentially. And in Yorkshire, how much um, is the property valued at that you've got in on the Yorkshire model? Two million. Yeah, there's four large properties. Whereabouts in Yorkshire? Scarborough. Sunny Scarborough. Scar yeah, sunny, sunny Scarborough, Scarborough by the sea. The I, thought, I thought you could buy the whole place for, for uh, that much money in Scarborough, to be honest with you. And I've done a few deals up that way. Um, OK, so are we all... Sorry, I was just yeah. going to ask another couple of questions. Yep. Quickly, so please. the one in Scarborough, yep. two million. What is that rented out per room? Or what, well, what per house, if you go on Air DNA, it averages out over seven, uh, 570 pounds a night. Okay. So you rent them out as the whole house per night? The whole night. house. We're so not I think doing, of Grandma 70th we're not birthday. We're not doing the Scarborough deal, Michelle. No, I know, but I'm just asking for his experience and his background and whether how successful he's been. Well, clearly very. Okay, uh, Andrew, thank you very much. We'll now have a, a chat amongst ourselves and we'll, we'll be back to you shortly. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Speak to you soon. Thank you. There's one great thing about Andrew is that he comes from based in Cambridge and, of course, hopefully he's a Cambridge United fan, uh, which will definitely um, Which means he's investable, right? Yeah. Which means saying. he's definitely investable. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we'll see. Well, he obviously does his research in his yeah. numbers. Yes. And the fact is he's already got the Very model as well. Man. Very bright man. And he's done that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if he's, just, he's, if he's overcomplicated with this service accommodation model. Just on a, you know, if it's going to be worth two million and it's going to cost him 1.4, yeah. that's in itself not a bad project. Is he yeah. kind of overcomplicated yeah. with service I think, accommodation? I think what you find with very intelligent people uh, in the property industry, in my view, 
um, not being one of them, clearly, um, <laughs> is, and that's an honest opinion, by the way, of myself, is that, um, they o that they're overanalyze, they're yeah. overanalytic, and they complicate it when it, property is a very simple business. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if he's got three flats, he can convert into three flats, yeah. and they stand him in at 1.4 million, he can sell them for two million pounds. You know, that's a reasonable, that's that, that, that's to, deal, me, that's, to me, that's, that's the deal. deal. Well, he's, he's actually saying, isn't it, he was buying it for 800 odd thousand or 900 thousand, yeah. and then spending some money to convert it, and then, uh, it'll be worth two million at the end. So that, that in terms of a project, is fairly. Yeah. Yeah, fairly yeah and the good. GDC was one point four million. Mm. So there's six hundred grand to make. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, he's spending high, half a million pounds on three flats. I mean, how? how, how well, big it depends. Are they? Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to clarify if he's factored in finance costs into that, or does he think if we're putting the money in, well, we, we need to ask him those questions, don't we? That's so, I mean, me. to me, to me. We need to know what this, what was the square footage of the building? Oh, it's, it's 191 square meters. What's that in English? 2,000, 2000 square feet. feet. So it's not 2, massive, square but not feet. small. So either. even if it even if it was to cost in in, in London, you know, 200 pound a foot to do, not the normal 110 or whatever. So even so, you know, he's been. It sounds to me, as long as it's not a totally derelict, that he's actually being fairly sensible on that. The only issue, though, is there is a person who lives there, who has three cats. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Didn't read that But he off, has but uh, lived there for a number of years. Is he a assistant tenant? I don't know. We'd have to ask the question. Good point. Was Tommy the caretaker? Yes, and he's uh, given them loyal service. And he's lived there years. free. Yeah. So th these are obviously. Yeah. Well, uh, Tommy will have to go, won't he? Finding Tommy a good home would be beneficial to the vendors. Mm. Andrew, welcome back. Uh, the first thing I need to ask you is I hear you live in Cambridge. I do. I was a director of Cambridge United for 18 years. And I'm hoping you're going to tell me you're a Cambridge United supporter. I am. I will be. Fantastic. <laughs> That's a great right answer. Right on, well sir. done. Right on. Super. Yeah. Right. I think okay. you found a partner. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so that's it. Deal done. Um, the things that I've got um, a few questions on um, with my moral compass is Tommy, the caretaker. We will look after him. Yeah. So my concerns are legally. Um, where do we stand with um, him being in the property? So he's got any rights to the property? Actually, he doesn't, actually. Okay. Um, it's just been quite leave. a lot of emphasis on Tommy and his cats being yeah, in the property. I always like to do the right thing. Oh, and, and Tommy knows to that he, he's potentially uh, going somewhere, being evicted. Yes, he knows. Yeah. What are you spending the money on for the refurb? Because as you're digging down to the basement, so could you talk to us a little bit about that? It needs underpinning as well that's wow. quite a big fee as well but that's included and that's got a specialist on the opinion that's not like hey my i can work out you andrew have you got a, a fixed price on the underpinning from from a specialist firm well i um, i can't remember the breakdown of all the 370k for the build i rounded up to 400k yeah but have you got have one. you got a, a fixed price from a yes specialist firm you have okay. yes i do and they're and giving a guarantee on it uh, yes, they are. Okay. Is there a basement already? And it just yes, there is. It's just a little bit deeper. That's right. Okay. okay. So it's so not a it's not a complete a dig. It's just a dropping it by. Correct. Would you be Would you be okay with just doing this development and selling it? Yes. And going back to the HMO, because I never looked at it like that. When I said there was seven or eight rooms, actually that doesn't include the basement. You can definitely get two rooms down there, and there are a couple of large rooms that you can split into two. So it's probably ten or eleven. Does the 1.4 million include a cost of finance, Andrew? Or were you assuming that we'd put all the money in and charge it? How do we think about it? Basically, that was a 50 50 JV. Yep. yep. Like that. So there was no cost of finance in okay. there. Okay. One thing about the one thing about over the years with every development I've done with a backer or, or my own money, I've always valued my money or my mm -hmm. backer's money. Okay. So I've yeah. always put that in at an interest rate. Okay. And I always give them that interest rate. At the moment, uh, I put all my borrowings in 8%. So the deal has to work after that. So I'll need to add 8% on top of that? I would, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. 140,000. So that will mean 1.56 cost. And yeah. since the GDV is well over 2 million anyway, so it's still basically well, the same it, and stacks that's up. That's a very flippant, Andrew, it's a very flippant well over 2 million. Well, I, it's not really because I really mind it very down to 2 million. It should be actually 2.1. Already. So it's a moving, it's a moving target. This is it, Andrew. But it not really. Planning no. consent agreed, has it? Yeah. So it's subject to planning. Correct. Could you buy it subject to planning? Do you think? 
exchange with that? I've already mentioned that already. And they, the problem is it's a, motiv it's a motivated seller, so it's cheaper than what it should be already. Yep. Yeah. And what is their motivation? Oh, it's in there. The, the motivation is the guy is very old. Could, yeah, but if you exchange contracts, you're pretty much committing. We could do that. And I've already mentioned that already, and I'm kind of open to that. I feel because the subject of planning, the planning is not... It's only if the investors want to get out very quickly, then the planning is an issue. Because the Lambeth Council are actually changing their guidelines. So we will get planning within two years at the latest. I can't so, wait two years, Andrew. Yeah. So we could, So if you just want something short, well, we can do a sub, If you want to do a short deal only, then we can do a subject to planning, no problem. You think so? Yeah, I've already mentioned it with them. Worst case scenario, you just convert it back to a normal house. Always have an out before you have an in. Yeah, Always exactly. know what you're going to do if it goes wrong. Uh, we could do a pre-app. That takes a month for the council to come back on a pre-app and say what their advice is on planning. And that's pretty, pretty straightforward and they're not like to change their minds. So if they say, yes, in principle, we would allow three flats in this subject to da, 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 then you'll probably like to get it. Yes, I, I actually quite like it. Um, and I, I think, uh, you know, given the subject of planning um, deals and the fact that it, the backup position is something it already is, which is a house. I know it's not the avenue we want to go down, but as a fail safe, um, I'd be quite interested in investing in this. That's wonderful. Okay, what's your offer? Subject to planning, if we can use bank finance as well, I'm quite happy to go with the terms that you've suggested. Oh, fantastic, yes. I think that there are people with a bit more expertise on this type of project than me, so I think you'd be better off with one of the other investors. So I won't be investing in this one. I, I think it's a great deal. I, I'll come in, I'll, I'll do the whole thing. Exactly as was said, so using bank finance, I'll put all the money in for 50%. So that's my offer, but I'm saying actually, no, you that's guys might be prepared to that's do it instead. <laughs> that's my offer. Well, I think we've all highlighted that. I think for me as well, it needs the bank finance. It's yeah. not as interesting if you're putting up the whole 1.4 million. It's too expensive, there's not enough in it. No. Um, but subject to getting the maximum leverage possible uh, with the bank and putting in all the equity, I'd be interested at, at 50%. I'd be interested in, in uh, joint venturing it with you. Uh, it would be subject to planning permission. Uh, I don't want to share it with any of these other lot. <laughs> That's the first thing I'd say. Uh, and I will offer you 35% of the deal, not 50%. Yeah, 65, yeah. Now you might ask why. The reason is so I've, got, the I've got more experience than the rest of the guys at, on this type of this type of project. I've been doing it. I've been doing it for forty odd years. Sold three and a half thousand properties like this, mm -hmm. converting. So um, you have a choice. You can either go with a lot of experience. You can go with some experience. Uh, that is entirely up to you. If I were you, I'd um, just have a little think about it now. I would share it, but I wouldn't drop the equity, the percentage. So if one of the other angels would like to share it, you could get two angels for the price of one, but it would be at a higher cost. By John, are you saying you only want 35%? No, I'm, I'm taking, I'm giving Andrew 35%. So you're taking 65%. Yeah. So therefore it's not the same cost. In fact, coming no, with, no. with a partnership between us would be better off for Andrew, really. Yeah. Well, only if he thinks you've got enough experience to do the deal and you'll, and, and, and you'll make as much money as we will, as me and Andrew will out of it. And whatever you want to do, Andrew, Andrew is called by us, basically. It's right. up to you. Thank you all. Thank not you very much for me. all your offers. And in fact, I'd, I'd love them all, actually. Got 50% uh, two ways or one way shared. Or you got 35%? Or three way. All, all three? Sorry, I'm sorry. Don't rule that yeah, out. Sorry, Don't rule yeah. that out. If you'd all do all three together, yeah? Yeah. Well, I could deal with that. Could be interesting. It yeah. could be an interesting mm. one. Um, 65, I think, is too high. Yeah, I think 65 is way too high, personally. Are you, well, are you giving him advice now? Well, you're his agent. No, I'm just, I'm just saying I think 50% is a much fairer deal. You get what you pay for in life, Simon, you know that. Yeah, I do know that. So, Andrew, what, what are you suggesting? Come in the middle between 65 and 50. I can't do that. What can you do? I've made my offer. I think it's too high. Well, I'm still happy to do a deal with someone else if you got if someone wants to come in. At fifty percent, we can share it. It's up to you. I really would like to work with well, you. Well, let's yeah. let's yeah. I was not let's slow down a moment. Okay. What about sixty percent? He doesn't like sixty-five. Would you accept sixty percent, twenty percent each? Well, on hang on a minute. You've just changed the, the goalpost now. We've already well, done that bit. You know, that's the, the you know the, well, the horse has bolted. I'm doing it again. 
Twenty percent for three. Twenty percent per person. Per person. Twenty percent. Yeah, let's do that. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. I'm happy. So Great. Come and shake hands, right? done. I was in, I was out, I'm back in. <laughs> <laughs> he got the seat. He got the strop on a bit, didn't he? Well done. Well, what a day. I came here looking for an investor. No, I got much more than that. I got three investors and three new friends and mentors. This is an awesome day. And I'm really looking forward to working with them to make this project uh, very successful and to help the people of Clapham. Oh, I'm very grateful for John Howard's offer. It was very generous of him. Yeah, very generous. 65% for him, <laughs> only 35 for me. If he had come down a little, I'd have worked with him. However, looking, reflecting back on it, I've got three new investor buddies, three new mentors, and I think actually for the long run, that will actually work out much better for me.